What's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Aaron Nix and this is the WrestlePlug YouTube channel. It's time to review WWE Smackdown Live from last night. Smackdown Live opens with a women's tag team championship match. Damage controls Dakota Kai and Io Sky versus the rather sex egg coupling, it has to be said, of Tegan Knox and Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan? Oh, suit you sir. Oh, suit you. Oh, yes. Match wasn't bad, nothing spectacular, but it was fine. I was worried with some of the women's matches that have been a little bit botchy lately that this might fall down that road. But, again, it's EO Sky who really keeps the match together. I feel like she's arguably the most underrated talent in WWE. Every match she's in, whenever it feels like it's not really clicking, it's not really connecting with an audience, much less the actual wrestlers themselves. She seems to step up her game. She's got great physicality. The shotgun drop kick on the outside. Gotta say though, Liv Morgan really stood out to me in this match. She is just getting better and better every time I see her. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased because I'm a super mark for her. But at the same time, she really contributed to this match. I really appreciate it. Also, that sunset flip power bomb to the outside. <laughs> Damage control come away with the win and retain the titles thanks to Tegan Knox getting blindsided by a hooded figure. Who will it be? We'll find out later. Oh wait, no we won't because they gave it away on WWE.com. Have a fucking surprise left in your life. Turns out the hooded figure was Xia Lee. So it's going to be Xia Lee versus Tegan Knox. Yay. One thing I will say, as much as I love Tegan Knox a lot, obviously huge fan of Nixon Newell back in the day when she was wrestling over here so often. It doesn't seem to be working too well already. I know it's only a very, very small sample size, so happy to be patient, but I just feel like it's going to take a lot longer for them to build her up. That being said, really great to see her, especially when you consider all the injuries that she's had to sustain over her career. Bray Wyatt continues this exceedingly slow burn. I... I love Bray Wyatt, okay? Everyone does, don't we? We all think he's great, he's very unique, he's very creepy, he's a great promo. But LA Knight kind of touched on something that was a little bit shoot in his promo when he called him out. And he said, oh, you're going to come out here, you're going to ramble, you're going to not get to the point, and then you're going to wear a costume and creepily abduct people like you did me last week. <laughs> it's kind of true, it's kind of what he's doing. He's cutting these really good promos that don't really go anywhere, and we're still waiting for something to happen. Hopefully the payoff is going to be worth it. Of course, Bray Wyatt comes down and says, Fuck yes, mate. You know what? I'll give you a shot at me. So he takes a shot at him, beats him up, and then Uncle Howdy makes his first appearance in person. We're pretty much sure at this point that it's Bo Dallas in a suit. Gotta be honest, I don't really care. He didn't look overly that intimidating. Great costume, nice jacket, nice mask, yeah, whatever. Until I see something a little bit more concrete, I'm not that impressed. And then LA Knight just kind of runs away because he's freaked out by the whole thing. And the laughing as well, the maniacal laughing. Do you know what? We're already getting that sense that they're going a little bit too over the top with things. Like, there's nothing wrong with this segment, but the fact that the laughing track went on for ages, it's so fucking obvious and fake that it's not him laughing, that it's just piped in over the sound. It just kind of makes you think, eh, whatever. Get to the fucking point. Hopefully this is actually going to lead somewhere very, very soon. Although probably not for a little while on SmackDown, because they take the next SmackDown for next week after this as well. This is basically why I watch SmackDown. Oh, fucking Gunter versus Ricochet for the IC title. Meaty Hoss kicking the shite out of an incredible athlete. Oh, suit you, sir. Suit you. Always remember to warm the end. <sighs> you don't want to go in cold. Legitimately would have been five stars if it had gone on about five minutes longer. Adam Pearce ejects the other members of Imperium, which ended up making this a really special match. And I'll tell you why, because... Very, very far and few between do we ever see a proper heel champion defend his title in a straight match and a clean victory as well. It seems like there's so much bullshit and shenanigans and disqualifications and outside interference. So this was actually really refreshing and it was a world-class wrestling match. Probably the best wrestling match I've seen, well, definitely since War Games at least, because War Games had a couple of absolute bangers in it, but this was Fucking fantastic. Gunter really is the best wrestler in the world for my money right now, based on his body of work, and probably my wrestler of the year, just based on everything he's done. Every match he has seems to be close to or a five-star. And not only that, the IC title finally 
feels like it's had the true resurgence. I can't think of anything that started the year with probably less luster and finished it with more than anything else. The IC title genuinely feels like a heavyweight title. And at some point, you've got to think, maybe Gunter could be the next Universal Champion. I would absolutely love to see that, the undisputed WWE Universal Champion. Because him versus Roman Reigns, he's a credible threat. Problem is, he's also a heel, so it'd be interesting to see how that dynamic works. That being said, the bloodline, as we found out later in the night, pretty much faces de facto, especially all the time Sami Zayn's on board. But this match, go out of your way to see it. Absolutely incredible. Ricochet, utterly fantastic. Massively underrated. It's a shame that he's not a good promo, because I feel like that's the only thing missing from him that would make him a really complete superstar. Like I said, though, incredible match. Please go and watch it. You will not be disappointed. Gunter, fucking Awesome. By the way, chopping him out of midair, oh, oh, suit you, sir. As you take your old fellow out, sir, oh, and give it to some dirty little bit of rough, oh, under a bridge or behind a railway siding, sir, oh, suit you, sir, oh. Listen, you know Time for a tag team triple threat number one contenders match with a load of people. It was alright, it was fine. I really like Legado del Fantasma, especially when you consider not only have they got Santos Escobar, who feels like a megastar just waiting to happen, they've got Zelina Vega, one of the just lights out hottest looking mamacitas on earth. Oh, suit you, sir. Tire up, sir. Yeah. Ooh. Tire up. Oh, suit you. Ooh. Up against the tree. Very back and alien, sir. Don't be fooled, though. It's not just about looks. It's about talent predominantly. And she's an amazing valet. Arguably the best women's valet that I've seen in the last 20 or 30 years. She really feels like a modern day Sherry Martel in so many ways. She elevates everything that she's involved with. As does Sarah Logan as Valhalla now with the Viking Raiders. And of course, Hit Row would be fab. If anything, I've got to be honest, I was more intrigued by the valets, the managers that were ringside, so to speak, than the actual wrestlers. The match was fine. Unfortunately, it then became not fine because Top Dollar botched badly. He tried to do a tope con Hilo and almost killed himself. He was too big to do it. He had no business doing it. I don't care if it worked in practice or whatever in front of a live audience. And of course, the Chicago crowd let him know that he had fucked up. It just wasn't very good. I've got to be honest as well. I don't think he's very good. I actually think he's a bit shit. Um, thank you very much, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. The amount of people who keep messaging me going, oh my god, it's great to see you on SmackDown. Apparently I look like top dollar. Not entirely sure what that's supposed to mean. Probably best I don't touch that subject. But not good news for him if he's being compared to some random Arab guy on YouTube who works in the British wrestling business, is it? Because ultimately, he's not really a fucking star and he certainly can't wrestle like one. Also, his ring gear is fucking awful. Uh, I feel sorry for Ashante the Adonis. It feels like he's been dragged down by everything else involved with Hit Row. And they also just don't click without Swerve, who's doing pretty decent things, all being said in AEW. Well, at least he won a tag title, which is more than you can say about what he would have been doing with Hit Row. That being said, it's Hit Row that win, and they will face the Usos next week in the pre-taped SmackDown, which was also taped last night. I haven't seen the results, don't want to, because I'm not a spoiler mark. However... Pretty sure Hit Row aren't winning the tag titles. And frankly, I'll be amazed if it's even a half decent match. If the Usos can get a good match out of top dollar, then they're the greatest tag team of all time, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and in your main event, the Bloodline come out. They've been teasing all night the idea that Sami Zayn, the honorary Us, would become Sami Uzo. And we all thought, oh my God, is it going to happen? However, Roman Reigns has got more things on his mind. They kind of built this concept for the final SmackDown of the year. It was going to be Kevin Owens and a mystery partner versus Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. I think the idea is that if they win that match, then they're going to bring him in. Interesting to see. Normally, I would have thought, yeah, they're probably going to win that match, although it's a fantastic match to end the year. However, John Cena appears on the Titan Tron and says, hey, uh, Kevin Owens texted me and reminded me that I have literally wrestled every year for the last 20 years and I have not wrestled this year. I can't lose my streak, bro. And he basically says, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll tag with Kevin Owens. That's going to slap to be fair. Uh, I really am excited for that. How can you not be as a wrestling fan excited for the idea of Roman Reigns tagging with Sami Zayn, the most over-talented in all of wrestling, against John Cena, one of the all-time great legends, and Kevin Owens, who again is one of the most underrated stars in the history of modern WWE at least. It's going to be fucking fantastic. And that's how the show closes with John Cena basically saying, see you later, ho, ho, holy shit. Great SmackDown, honestly. Really, really good. Um, not 
fantastic, not perfect in every way, but a great SmackDown, a good SmackDown. Uh, it's just a shame that a couple of the matches were a little bit hit and miss and the women's stuff just felt a little bit kind of blasé, especially with the backstage segments. Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler beating up Raquel Rodriguez, who's already injured. I, I don't care. They're trying to build sympathy, but not working for me. However, because it was two hours, it just flew by so easily. And of course, Ricochet versus... Gunter, oh, go out of your way to see that. Bit of a shame that Gunter's probably going to face Braun Strowman next, so I can't imagine that's going to be nearly as good. But hey, if anyone can get a really high quality match out of Braun Strowman, it'll be Gunter. I've been Aaron X. Thank you very much for watching. My apologies, it's been a little bit slow with reviews and content lately. Unfortunately, I've been quite ill recently, uh, so bear with me. Have a bit of patience. But Christmas is coming up. We've got loads of fun stuff coming out over Christmas just to kind of keep you guys entertained, obviously, as well. We have a games night and a few other different things building within the WrestleBlood community. So if you're on your own this Christmas, please don't hesitate to contact us. It would be really awesome to hear from you. You don't have to sit there alone. You don't have to suffer in silence. There is always somebody available to talk to you. And all the guys involved with WrestleBlood are definitely here to talk to you. However, as I've said, I've been Aaron X. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you very soon for more content from the WrestleBlood.